Carmelo Anthony. I, it, listen, before you even say anything, Diamond, we're gonna play. We're gonna talk about this, okay? This, this is bigger than Nino Brown, okay? This didn't start in Houston. This started four or five years ago when Mike D'Antoni was the head coach of the New York Knicks, okay? There was a little thing going on called Lynn Sanity, all right? Jeremy Lynn had played eight games. <laughs> Lynn Sanity. Eight games. He went seven and one in those eight games, and he was the feature player in the offense. Sure was. Because Carmelo Anthony was hurt, okay? He, uh, Mike D'Antoni implemented his offense. He was running the same that same, uh, what is it, seven seconds or less offense with basically Jeremy Lin playing the Steve Nash role. Um, and he was being successful. It was working. But your star's coming back now. And when your star comes back, all that little parlor trick shit y'all were doing has to stop. Parlor trick. trick. Listen, Mike D'Antoni's offense is a novelty, okay? It works for a time. And then when it's figured out, it looks like garbage, i.e. what you see this year. Once it's figured out, or once you don't have the players or the pieces clicking the way they're supposed to be, things fall apart. Okay. So, with that being said, we're looking at it. Okay, oh, that's so, you know, we're not gonna fit, uh, no, not going to speed up here. When Carmel Anthony comes back, there's a power struggle. We're going to play the way that the franchise player it's, that's the way the team's going to go because I'm the franchise player. We're not going to completely change our game plan because you had some flash in the plan player coming here who we couldn't figure out. And I'll give you this. Jeremy Lin is one of those, at the time, was one of those guards who I would say was better than 80% of the league. That's really good. So you're, so you're not saying he wasn't the parlor trick. The offense was the The offense trick. is a parlor okay. trick. The okay. offense is a parlor trick. Okay. And Jeremy Lin was the recipient of, of those parlor tricks. Okay, So he, he was, we, the, the offense had a good, a good batch of teams that it worked against. And Jeremy Lin was successful. But now Melo's back. And now the team needs to go back to the way it was running before because now Melo's back. It's not like that team was, was losing. They yeah. were a playoff team that – that was able to sustain their run in spite of Melo being out. True. Not because true. he was gone. True, true. So because now, they – Now, say this. Uh -huh. Had they not been winning then and then started winning, would you have been in favor of them returning to the old offense when the star returned? Had they not been winning? Yeah. And then started winning. Oh, yeah. When the Jeremy Lin came yeah. in? Yeah. Then that's a whole different story. Yeah. Then, then of course. Of course. But not when we're, we're fighting for, what, what, the three, four seed or whatever they was fighting for that yeah. year to get into the playoffs. And, and you, yeah, he just, he was something that happened. It was a happy, it was a, a happy happenstance or whatever yeah, you call it. Yeah, it was. And it, it, it worked time. out. But at the end of the day, now, now daddy's home. It's time to get back <laughs> to what we're doing. It's time to get back to the real offense. Um, and because they, they, they continued to bump heads on that, uh, Melo went over his head and said either him or me. And they chose like they were supposed to choose. They chose their franchise player because coaches could come out here and roll out a ball. And as you can see, Mike Woodson's ISO Melo offense got them where they were supposed to be. Now they fell apart because they had some, some old pieces there. But um, So you believe in those type of struggles – they need to side with the franchise player. Yes, I do. Because um, you can find coaches. You can't me, find me, star players. Completely all over off place. target. Don't okay. lose where you at. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. New England. Okay. Let's say those two have a problem. Which and they, Brady they have. said, and they have had problems. They've had problems. And maybe Brady has said him, him or me before, but they were able to smooth it over. And I, I feel Who like do you choose. You have to go. If what I'm if your Rob, franchise player is the age that Brady is? Exactly, and but but at the same time, that's like I would hate to I would hate to be Robert Kraft in that position yeah. because you've got all these championships because of these two. It would the the constant has yes. been these, these two. two. It's not yeah, it's, it's, all, not, it's yeah. always been this too. Now we know Belichick can win, but can you win at this level without this quarterback? We still don't know that. And Belichick wanted the opportunity to see that. Tom Brady saw that he was becoming more comfortable with getting Garoppolo in that position, and he got him out of there. Yeah. That was the him of me right there. That, that was the That's him of me. That was the him of me. It was if you're either going to go with the future or you're going to go with the guy you think is your son. Could. <laughs> Could. Could. Any quarterback work with 
the coach. With with ah. Uh, could, let's just say, could Flacco go there and be successful? No. Could Eli go there? Take I, out, take out Brady. Insert Eli or insert Flacco. I, I I feel like they would have some success, but they wouldn't have the success. Tom Brady is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and Brian Belichick is one of the greatest coaches of all time. And because they're together, that that franchise has done what they've done for the past yeah. twenty years, and that's yeah. it. Fair. And that's it. And that's yeah. That's it. You you can plug you can plug and play whoever you want on that offense, whoever you want on that defense, as long as they those plug two and are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just you know they pick a dude up off the street and, right. and put him in there. And he might score three He's touchdowns. A winner. Right. Winner. right, right, right. So back to back to Mello. Okay, back to Mello. So you, you you're you are tracing. Okay, so yeah, so we okay, so so we got to so we got to the power struggle. The franchise chose Mac, Mike D'Antoni. They went on to have some success with Mike Woodson, um, and then you know cut to Melo getting traded to the Houston Rockets. Now last year the Houston Rockets won sixty five games. Okay, and when that sixty five games they won, they also had to make some changes. So they got Trevor Rees out of there. They got. Uh, Mbam Butte out of there. Um, got my man Ryan Anderson out of there. Um, brought in Brandon Knight, Marquise yep. Chris, yep. Um, and Carmel Anthony. Now, um, I'll say this Trevor Reza, for people who say basically the, the, that, that was basically the switch. You took out Trevor Reza, who was a defensive minded player, and you put in Carmelo Anthony in that position, right? Now, um, as far as production goes, Trevor Reza averaged 11 points in that position. Carmel Anthony was averaging 13 points in that position. So, it wasn't a drop-off. Right. Scoring went up. Um, people came to seem to keep, uh, they want to keep bringing up the, the two-point game that he had. Um, he only scored two points in that game. Maybe went one for 11. Um, Chris Paul went three for 16 in that game. James Harden went seven for 25 in that game. They all had a bad game. For some reason, all of the blame seems to be keep, keep getting put on Melo. Because it was, it was a, two points, my nigga. It was two, okay, it's two points. <laughs> He's also not the focal point of that offense. Facts. I'm the, I'm the third option. So I'm going to get in where I fit in. And if I have an off game, I have an off game. You guys still won 65 games without me last year. And with you. With you? We're five and seven. We're five and seven. We're five and seven. Okay. But. People when, think that he may have played his last game okay. in Houston. But if you don't look at a roster and I show you that this team went six, won 65 games last year and now this same team who may have had even have better pieces than last year is now five and seven. You're going to look at that and you're going to say, something going on with the coaching before you get to even break down the roster. But you know, that's usually the last place they go. That's the last place they go. And in order, when that, when the seat starts getting turned towards me, I was like, oh, shit, I got to start making some changes around here <laughs> before they start looking at me. Right. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? Ah, that nigga got me fired in New York. Get him out of here. That's so, how we're going to shake it up so in you, here. You, you're going back to the animosity that yes. has to be there Mike D'Antoni the hates Carmelo Anthony. A strong word. I, I strongly believe that I strongly believe that Mike D'Antoni is a resentful person. So that means and this was doomed to fail yes, in the beginning. Yes, from the beginning. I believe that he brought him in here, and if it was a win-win situation for him, because if he comes in and, and his, his career is rejuvenated, then you reap the benefits of it. But if he, is, if he is anything less than what you expect him to be, you can cut him and embarrass him. Which is what he did. Happening. And you can say, "Look, I tried. Yeah, listen, I was a I, professional. Right. I brought him in, and it just it just didn't work out for us. Mm. Just, now, mind you, prior to that game, he just had a 20, 28 point game. Right, right, prior to that, man. How it, how can how can they get back on track? Well, can they get back? On the Houston, track? I don't know, man. I'm what I'm saying this this doesn't like something that they can just flip a switch. They really remind me of the um, the Washington Wizards." I uh, have all the talent on the world, of the in the world on their roster, but it's just it's not it's not coming together. It's not working. Yeah, it's not clicking. Um, either they're not listening to their coach's message anymore. Um, they're tired of where they are. Um, they don't like who they're playing with. I don't know what it is about these two teams. I'm but I'm not ready to make it as quick as it was. It's Carmelo. That I don't I don't I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That that's the issue. I believe that there's a lot more going on, and the easy. 
the easy point, uh, finger to blame, the easy scapegoat to give was was Carmelo. So Mike D'Antoni, instead of uh, you know taking the blame for this or, or taking on the um, the the brunt of the blame, he just he cut Carmelo. So what what happens to him now? Um, I don't think he goes out of work for long. Um, oh, no. It's pretty much up. To, he's got carte blanche wherever he wants to go. Um, I would like to see Carmelo in somewhere like San Antonio. Um, Boston, somewhere like there, um, where he is not expected to do much but come off the bench and and get buckets, which is what he was doing. It's just I, I don't I don't know what the problem I don't know what the issue is. Um, I don't know once you cut him, who are you giving minutes to, to, to to supplant those those, those that offensive power that he was giving you. I don't I don't understand it. I just don't understand the move. For the life of me, and I, I just want to like see you what said, happens. It's there. personal. Yeah, I, it's I believe personal. it's it, it's, the, it's the only answer. It's the only logical answer I can come with because anything from a basketball standpoint, I don't get. Because even if Carmelo is off, you still have to factor in Carmelo and Anthony. Because if you see if he sees one go in, then you're going to see three go in. So if he's standing over in a corner and you give him a free look, then that's then you're going to die by that. It, it's it's still Carmelo Anthony you're putting on the field, uh, on the floor and now you've got whoever nobody's running out at PJ Tucker. This is going to be uh, interesting to see how things progress, but like you said, he's not going to be nah, man. without nah, a team very long. Yeah, man, you're gonna keep giving this man contracts and buying them out. Fine. <laughs> yeah, Fine. He's, <laughs> he's, he's making a lot of money. We we <laughs> talked about this last week. Before we get out of here, we talked about this last week. Mm-hmm. Floyd Mayweather has now. Chickened out oh, of the fight in Japan on New Year's Eve. So wait a minute, are we fighting? Fighting? I didn't right. know. I a, thought are we fighting? Fighting? Fight. I thought. You know, <laughs> I thought this was for the CBC. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's kind of laughable. You know, yeah. what I mean, when when you think about it, and he tried to act like he was conned. Oh, no, Floyd, you were trying to con them. And the, the Asian people are a very smart bunch, okay? Yeah. You ain't going to go over there and steal no money, brother. <laughs> you know, really it's, it's, he, he said he didn't think this was going to be highly publicized. He thought it was going to be a sm- They thought he going to go over there and steal some money. Yeah. It's not happening, Floyd. No, sir. Everybody it, knows it, it about it. It took me back to, you saw uh, Django Unchained? Yes, I saw Django Unchained. <laughs> nigga fights. You, yes. So, you know, <laughs> it took me back to that. <laughs> I mean, he thought it was just going to be a closed room. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, you know. I guess what some one of the people come up like uh have that fighter come to yeah, my hotel. So room. Right. I mean, what, what is <laughs> Floyd is looking crazy out here. Yeah, man, it's gonna be uh, we could black out all the cameras for real. <laughs> see if I get my ass open. See, I'm in Japan, baby. Ain't nobody gonna see this. I think it's the internet, Floyd. It's the internet. It don't count if it's in Japan. Yeah, right. No, it does, nigga. Don't catch yeah. the knees and them elbows, brother. Do you think that he just needs to hang it up? Um, if he gone. if he not boxing, man. Just chill. No MMA. No kick. No, I don't want. I don't want to see none of that shit. I don't yeah. care. Like Floyd, I don't care. Like for real, I don't care about yeah the kickboxing, the MMA. I don't even want to see you fight Conor Murder. I want to see you fight a real boxer. And would you want to see him fight Triple G? I think Triple G will wax his ass. I think man. so too. It's but. just yeah. Like, but that's what I'm saying. But he can't. Oh, and but that's where he is and now. And not Pacquiao. No, hell no! I want to see no Pacquiao <laughs> fight, man. That fight was eight years too late anyway. Yeah, but uh, so, and, but this is these fight. are the safe fights that he's taking. And okay, yeah, the, the object is to beat the dude in front of you, and he continues to beat the dude in front of him. But you, 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 first, you it was a, a shell of Pacquiao. Then it was a not ready Canelo Alvarez. Then it was uh, uh, Conor McGregor. And now you're trying to fight another dude who's not a boxer. Go fight a boxer. Like, go shit, go fight Danny Garcia or something, man. Go fight somebody. It ain't got to be the top tier. Like, anybody will pay. We'll still pay to see a Floyd fight. Like, I'll but still pay to, to watch it. But it needs to be a boxer. Yo. I don't want to see you fighting uh, Andrew Silva or... Uh, <laughs> BJ Penn or some, yeah, the Rock, or, yeah, some goofy shit with yeah. or Rand, Ronda Rousey or something. Like I don't want to see none of that. I want to see you fight. Uh, you could yeah, you could fight Canelo again for real. I I, I, I That'd pay be to a see good you, fight. I pay to see you fight Canelo because you're right. Again. He wasn't he wasn't quite ready. Canelo wasn't ready to fight. Him. fight. Yeah. Shit, I pay him to see him fight Tank or uh, Adrian Broner at this point. I would pay Adrian Broner. See, I would pay to see Floyd fight Adrian Broner. I would pay top dollar to well, see I'll him fight Adrian Broner. That would be a hell of a promo. Yo, yeah, yeah, getting ready oh, for yeah. the fight. Yeah, <laughs> if, if people can make it through it, if you can tolerate enough of that shit, would you pay to see him fight Fifty? 
Ah, yes, I would pay to see <laughs> 50 rag doll shit out Florida all over the red. That would be a good fight. You I can, think they, I think they can sell can, tickets to yeah, that. You can hit me if you want, man. You can hit me out. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Hit me, hit me first. Go ahead, hit me first. I'm gonna, I think I'm slam you on your neck. 50 boy. and Floyd Mayweather <laughs> could sell tickets. Oh yeah, they could sell. 50 would sell that fight out. And then buy the tickets so nobody can on beat Instagram. Me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And <laughs> then buy the tickets out. I don't want ain't nobody gonna see you beat me up, man. Ain't nobody gonna see that. I bought all these tickets, man. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just Ja Rule out there. This is the only person that came to see the fight. 50 and Ja Rule, would you pay to see that fight? Like a celebrity uh, boxing fight? A celebrity match? boxing. Yes. I would pay to see Ja Rule whip 50 Cent's ass again. Yes. I was. I, we would need to see it, though. So you're saying for all 50 Cent's tough talk, he's just all, I the muscles is for show. Listen, I'm not fighting a nigga. But what I'm saying <laughs> is that Ja Rule beat him. So if Ja Rule may know the, the key to beating 50 Cent, and I would pay to see that. I would pay to see Ja Rule fight 50 Cent. Yes. Yeah, well, we need to commentate that. Nigga. And, and you know, keys, he's, Ja Rule's he's, keys to victory. Right, he's coming from... Brings you know, back Irv guys. He's coming from struggle, too. So, you get, know, he's fighting, for, he's fighting for a different... He's fighting like Club Lang. Like, he's fighting, he's fighting angrily. <laughs> Tony Yeo will be the corner man. <laughs> Who's in Jai's corner? Yeah. Vita? They tell Young Buck, they be like, no, nah, nigga, no, stay, no, stay, 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 stay away. Stay where you at. <laughs> stay where you at, Buck. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. See Thank you, you as always. Yes, man. So we'll be back next week and, um, you know, more, more discussion. And uh, we'll definitely know the future of the Ravens hey. at that point. Hey, Lamar Jackson, give me uh, 300 total yards, please. Now, what's your prediction? On, on that game. I got I got the I got, uh, make me show my homer. Um I got the Ravens winning. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Um I want to see three hundred total yards of offense from from Lamar Jackson. So I want to see at least um hundred fifty yards passing and maybe shit, hundred fifty yards on the ground. Okay, all right, let's say two fifty. Two fifty. Lofty goals, lofty. Two fifty. I need hundred and fifty in the air, I need hundred on the ground. If that's if that's so what you want to do. If he does that. If he does if he gives me two hundred and fifty yards total and no turnovers. Right. And oh he's, yeah, yeah he's that's my good. guy. Yeah, that's my guy for the rest of the year. That's my guy. Now, that's my guy. If he doesn't have he a good doesn't. showing, if he does gives, he get another chance next week? Oh yeah, he's a first round pick. He got. Yeah, but this, we don't want him to get hurt. Is, uh, we don't want him to get hurt. But this is his show to mess up. Okay, so this is we don't you don't spend a first round draft pick and not give him every opportunity to succeed. That's true. So that's true. if this if that's what we're gonna do, if if Joe is hurt, I don't want to see Joe for the rest of the year. And yeah. I wanted to be Lamar. I wanted to be the. I want Lamar to be the reason we don't see Joe for the rest of the year. He had his chance. It's over with. All right, there you have it. Bye, Joe. We'll be back. We'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs>